We're going to look at something called partitioning a line segment. So let's read a couple things. First, uh, uh, a directed line segment is known as basically uh, a dilation ray. But the way it gets named actually matters. So if you call it a directed line segment AB, that means A is the center of dilation and B is the pre-image point. So again, the name of this matters. So if they call it the directed line segment AB, it's basically starting at A and it's on its way towards B. Okay, that's the first thing to know. The second thing to know is this term partitioning. To partition means to cut it into pieces or parts. To partition is to cut it. So, for instance, if they said partition it in a 2 to 3 ratio, that means there are going to be five parts when you're done. So, if you look over on the right here, to partition it in a 2 to 3 is that it would be there would be two parts, and then you would have uh, three parts to complete it. Understand that there are five total parts, two and then three. And it would also always go two first, then three. Why? Because we're starting from A. So in this case, it says we have a directed line segment AB. It means A is the kind of the center of dilation. And they would like us to point, put point P on that segment so that it divides the segment into a ratio of one to three. Now know what that ultimately means is there'll be four parts. There'll be a one part, and then there'll be a three part. That's what we mean by one to three, four total parts. Now what I'd like to teach you is that when they talk about a partitioning ratio of one to three, there are four parts. And I would like to convert that ratio into a scale factor. Now if we were thinking of this as a scale factor, so here is our original guy right here. Basically to scale it um, in this manner, there are four parts in total. Four parts in total and when you're done you're a one away. This is where P would be to be one away. The scale factor would be the image, which is AP over the original which is was four parts so the the partitioning ratio is one to three but our scale factor would be to be one-fourth of that value let me clear things away and try that one more time here's how this works they would like you to partition meaning to cut up AB, this is directed line segment AB, into a 1 to 3 ratio. Ultimately, that means there will be four uh, parts in total to the breakup. Because you're going to have one part here to get to P, and then there will be three parts to complete it out. That would be a 1 to 3 ratio. But if we wanted to convert this to a scale factor, which we do so that we can dilate here, it would mean that the original point had four, that's the pre-image, and the image is at one. So remember, it's always image over pre-image. So this would be a one and a four. This makes sense because this definitely contracted, right? It used to be all the way out here, and now when we're done, we're back here take a look at the connection between this ratio and the scale factor. Alright, let's see if we can convert this one to a scale factor. So this ratio is 3 and 1, which means first comes the 3 and then comes the 1. So what would be the scale factor here? The original point B is 4 away. So the pre-image value was a 4 and the image is 3 away so this would be 3 fourths. You might be able to start to see kind of a little bit of a trend there. 3 
out of the four parts, right? This is the scale factor, but 3 to 1 would be the actual partitioning ratio. Again, it's the image, three parts, to the pre-image, four parts. So again, 3 to 4. Let's do another. I want you to notice here something new happened, just to teach you to keep an eye open for this. This is line segment, directed line segment BA. That means B is the center now, because it's called BA. So, this is a partitioning ratio of 2. The 2 comes first from the B end, and then the 1. What would be that as a scale factor? Well, the total amount of parts is 3. That's our original amount. And then we, we scaled P to B here, so this would be 2 thirds. Again, you see the 2 thirds happening, 2 parts out of this. Here's a good clue, too. All of the partitions will always be reductions because you're, you're cutting up the segment by cutting it back. One last group here. More practice helps you when you get to these yourself. So let's look at the first one. These are both BA, so B is where we start. What's the partitioning ratio? Well, there's two parts here, and then there are three parts. So the partitioning ratio would be two parts to three parts. Now, how does that convert to um, our friend the scale factor? The original amount are five total parts. That was the original amount. And when we're done, we are two parts away. This would be two-fifths would be this one. Likewise, uh, B is our center of dilation. Um, what would be the partitioning ratio? One part to one part. That's our ratio. What would be the scale factor? Well, the original value was two away. That was our pre-image. And then after we did the partition, it was one away. So a scale factor of one half, the partitioning ratio is one to one. Now, the reason we did all this converting <laughs> is because what's going to happen is we're going to give you a, a partitioning ratio. And to do that, to figure that out, we are going to need the scale factor to help us out. So I need you to be able to go from a partitioning ratio to the scale factor. This just reverses the practice. Um, let's take a look. The partitioning ratio is 1 to 4. 1 part to 4 parts. So ultimately there are 5 parts in total and so this would be the scale factor. Again, how do I know that? Think about it this way. This, the partition is 1 to 4 and so again there are 5 parts in the original and we are one away. So you, you kind of learn a quick way to get here. Let's go the other way. What happens if you were told that the scale factor is two to three? Think of what that means. That means there were three parts and three total parts and you were uh, here two away. So this actually would be two to one would be the partitioning ratio. So I'm just showing you how to go between the two worlds scale factor to partition and partition to scale factor. Let's do this last one before we actually get to the problems we were building up to be. So here is our partitioning ratio. What ultimately that means is there are five parts, it stops, and then there are seven parts in the situation. That means there are ultimately a total of um, 12 parts. Five and seven make 12. So the scale factor would be 5 and 12. You can kind of see what we're doing each time to obtaining that. Let's go the other way. If you had the scale factor is 3 to 4, the scale factor is 3 to 4, that would mean you have a partitioning ratio of 3 is to 1. So going between those two worlds there a little bit. All right, we're ready to try the actual problem now. All of that was to get to a problem like this. Now, first I want to say to you, what I'm about to do is basically exactly as the previous module, which was dilation from any point in the plane. So you're going to see some great commonality here, and I'll show you what we're about. 
This says, determine the location of point P that partitions a directed line segment into a ratio of 1 to 1. Now, I want you to basically ignore the ratio of 1 to 1 and recognize that that scale factor would be 1 half. That's why we did those conversions, is if you have uh, a scale factor of 1 to 1, so what would that look like? Or, sorry, a, a partitioning ratio of 1 to 1. It would mean that there were two parts and you scaled back to one part. So all of that preamble, all of that stuff, was so that when we got to this point, you could turn uh, this partition into a scale factor. And um, they tell us, so A, think of A as the center of dilation um, in this process. So here we go. Remember, we need to know our rise and our run to do a dilation. So like we did in the previous module, to find the run, we would take 3 and subtract a negative 5, and we would get 8 for our run. Our rise would be 6 minus 2, and we would get 4 for our rise. So this is our run, and this is our rise. We've already found our scale factor to be 1 half. So at this stage, honestly, all of the preamble that we did was just so that you could learn how to convert um, this partitioning ratio to a scale factor so that we could do what we've already done in the previous module, which is dilate uh, from a center that's not the origin. Here's our negative 5 from our center of dilation A. Here's our 2 from that center of dilation A. Our scale factor we found out to be um, 1 half, right? We converted the partition ratio to 1 half. And so that happens to both sides here. And then we're going to put in our run. Our run um, will be an 8. Our rise will be a 4. And now we're ready to basically partition that by this dilation. And uh, this becomes a 4. Negative 5 uh, plus 4 is negative 1. And over here, this becomes 2 and 2 make 4. This becomes our answer. I want to kind of draw that as a picture. Let's remember that uh, our point values here. I want to draw what that actually just did. So our, our original segment was AB. Here a negative 5 and 2. Here was our B. And again, this is a directed line segment. So what that means is A is kind of our center of dilation. And they wanted us to partition it so that it would come in the order of a 1 to 1. In other words, one part here and one part here. And what we learn to do is turn that into a scale factor of one half. In other words, this point B would get scaled back one half to find exactly the, the correct proportions. And when we did that, you and I found the point to be negative one and four, which is exactly that location there. We found the point that would partition it in a one to one ratio. And the way we did it is we just used dilation by that scale factor. Let's do one more and call it good. Let's move a little faster. We're running out of time. Our, our ratio is 2 to 3. You find out that that is a 2 to 5 scale factor. Easy to convert. We need our run and our rise. So this would be uh, 13 minus 1 gives me 12. And negative 10 subtract a negative 5 becomes uh, a negative 5 value. So we have our run and our rise now. We have uh, 12 and negative 5. We have our scale factor and we have our center. We then start at 1 and we start at negative 5. Those are the x and y of our dilation. Our scale factor is 2 fifths is what it is. 
and over here is also two-fifths. We now place in our run, which is 12. We now place in our uh, rise, which is negative 5. Um, in this case, uh, this little calculation turns out to be a decimal, which is 4.8. So this is 1 plus 4.8, so I get 5.8. It's going to happen from time to time. Over here, I get a better answer. This becomes negative 2. So negative 5 and negative 2 is negative 7. This is the partitioning location to cut it into 2 and 5. Let me finish by showing you that diagram as well to make sense of that answer. So here is the idea. This is our center of the directed line segment AB. Um, here is the point B down here. And they want us to partition this into a two parts and then three parts. And so what we did is we used a scale factor of two-fifths. And when we did that, we took this directed distance and did two-fifths of it and landed right here, which happens to be, we found it to be 5.8 to the right and negative 7 down, and that is exactly the location to partition it into two parts and then three parts. They won't always land on a nice integer, so don't get too scared, but that's the idea of partitioning.